On June the 24th, 1981, Mary, the mother of Jesus, began appearing to six Croatian children in the small mountain village of Medjugorje in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Today, the Blessed Mother continues to come to three of the visionaries every day. Mary is coming to the earth as a loving mother with an urgent plea for prayer, fasting and conversion to her son, Jesus. She warns the world that peace today is in a state of grave crisis. Jesus is the King of Peace, and only He can give you the peace that you seek. Pray for peace, so that as soon as possible, a time of peace, which my heart waits impatiently for, may reign. Since 1981, tens of thousands of Catholic priests, hundreds of bishops and cardinals, over 30 million pilgrims from all over the world, have come to this holy place where the Blessed Virgin Mary from 2,000 years ago continues to appear every day. So important is Medjugorje that jurisdiction has been moved from both the local ordinary and the local bishops' conference to the Vatican itself. The Blessed Mother is revealing a series of ten secrets to the visionaries relating to future events in the world. Some, according to the Virgin, involve certain chastisements that are to come. She reminds us, however, that wars and even natural disasters can be averted through prayer and fasting. Medjugorje is a sign to all of you and a call to pray and live the days of grace that God is giving you. Little children, do not forget that you are all important in this great plan which God leads through Medjugorje. God desires to convert the entire world from the depth of my heart, I call you all to open yourselves to this great grace that God gives you through my presence here. The web portal of Radio Vatican reported in a post of July 21st, 2007, that Pope Benedict XVI during his stay in Lorenzago di Cadore, spent one hour praying in front of an image of Our Lady of Medjugorje. The preacher to the papal household chose Medjugorje that summer to give a retreat to priests, and the youth festival saw 40,000 young people from all over the world come together for eight days of prayer, 450 priests con-celebrating their opening mass. Blessed Mother Teresa of Calcutta wrote in her own hand, we are all praying one Hail Mary before Holy Mass to Our Lady of Medjugorje. Pope John Paul II had called Medjugorje the confessional of the world and said that if he weren't Pope, that's where he would be living as a priest, helping to hear confessions. On April 6, 1995, he had made public his desire to go to Medjugorje, writing to friends in Poland. We every day return to Medjugorje in prayer. He believed Medjugorje to be the fulfillment and continuation of Fatima and concluded his daily private rosary in the Vatican Gardens. Our Lady of Medjugorje, pray for me. He once told visiting pilgrims to Rome, Our Lady of Medjugorje will save America and wrote to friends in his own hand, I thank Sophia for everything concerning Medjugorje. I, too, go there every day as a pilgrim in my prayers. I unite in my prayers with all those who pray there or receive a calling for prayer from there. Today we have understood this call better. I rejoice that our time is not lacking people of prayer and apostles. Medjugorje is better understood these days. I, myself, am very much attached to that place. In confirmation, bishops and cardinals of the Universal Church from Africa to Asia to the Americas have built and consecrated Medjugorje shrines, recognized new religious orders inspired by Our Lady of Medjugorje, and officially sanctioned new religious congregations whose mission is to live and spread Our Lady's messages.
wishes for people to know what is happening in Medjugorje. Speak about it so that all will be converted. Dear children, you are responsible for the messages. The source of grace is here, but you, dear children, are the vehicles transmitting the gifts. Therefore, dear children, I am calling you to work responsibly. Everyone will be responsible according to his own measure. Dear children, I am calling you to give the gift to others with love and not to keep it for yourselves. In response, Mary TV is constructing a modern communications facility next to St. James Church in Medjugorje. This project also responds to Pope John Paul II's final appeal to the Church. He repeated throughout his last apostolic letter, Do not be afraid of the new technologies. At the beginning of his pontificate, three days before being shot in St. Peter's Square, just before Our Lady started coming to Medjugorje, the Pope of the Secret of Fatima had said, The pastoral ministry vested in me the conciliar outlook I have so often spoken about and encouraged, my personal experience and convictions about humanity, about Christianity, and about the role of bishop, all lead me to emphasize the possibilities for good, the richness, the timeliness of the media. Years later, he would lament, public opinion has been shocked and how easily the advanced communication technologies can be exploited by those whose intentions are evil. At the same time, can we not observe a relative slowness on the part of those who wish to do good to use the same opportunities? It is not easy to remain optimistic. It would be a significant achievement if Christians could cooperate more closely with one another in the media. Cooperating with Mary TV now offers you an opportunity to respond. When news of Our Lady's presence with us in Medjugorje reaches people through the media, lives are changed. While in prison, Jim Jennings, incarcerated for 18 years for crimes including murder, attempted murder, armed robbery and assault and battery, happened to see scenes on television of an apparition in Medjugorje. He experienced at that moment grace for conversion that led him and his fellow inmates to consecrate their New Jersey prison to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Today, he centers his life around the Rosary and the sacraments, grateful at the end of his life to have physical sufferings to offer in reparation for his sins. Lola Falana, the highest paid female entertainer in Las Vegas history, happened to see scenes of Medjugorje on TV one night in 1987 when she was lying in bed suffering from MS. She found herself praying that she'd gladly give up all her fame if she could just go there, climb that mountain, and pray before that cross. Within the year, she went to Medjugorje, was healed, and became a Catholic. She has centered her life ever since around the adoration of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Father James Wiley of Pittsburgh left the priesthood in 1974. He no longer believed in the existence of God. As a favor for a friend, he recorded on his VCR a Medjugorje television program. He testifies, After seeing that program on TV about Medjugorje, I suddenly believed. I went from unbelief to belief overnight. I was given the grace of conversion by seeing that one program on TV. Father Wiley has since, with Rome's approval, been reinstated by his bishop to active ministry in his diocese. After watching a television program about Medjugorje in San Francisco, Congressman Tom Lantos, founder of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, right hand to President Clinton in Congress and not a baptized Christian, organized a congressional briefing in Washington, D.C. on the importance of the messages of peace being given to the world today by Our Lady in Medjugorje. After viewing that same program, the executive director of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus, also not a baptized Christian, wrote to the president of Mary TV. You have a very important mission to disseminate this information to the world and to the president of Bosnia. I want to add my voice to that of Congressman Chris Smith urging you to visit Medjugorje. There are times in the life of a nation 
as much in the lives of individuals when only divine providence can point to a new and unexpected solution to the problems. A Prime Minister who happened to hear through the media in his country a live interview about Medjugorje decided to give his life to Our Lady and consecrate his country to her Immaculate Heart. He officially did the consecration and continues receiving Our Lady's monthly messages, though he and his wife and 85% of his country are Hindu. What powerful confirmation of the possibilities for good, the richness, the timeliness of the media. Just listen now to the testimony of Don Calloway. As a young boy, he was taking heroin, crack, opium every day. By the age of 14, he had committed felonies. His was a life cycle of death. And then, one night his whole life changed, when just seeing pictures of Medjugorje in a book lifted his attention from the gutter to the beauty of the face of Our Lady. Overnight, he was given the grace of conversion. Today, Father Donald Calloway is Vocations Director for the Marians of the Immaculate Conception and House Superior of the Marian House of Studies in Steubenville, Ohio. Mary TV believes the graces experienced by these people can likewise happen for the whole world overnight by having its gaze lifted to the beauty of the face of Our Lady, present with us all today through Medjugorje. Join Mary TV in responding to Pope John Paul II's last apostolic letter, The Rapid Development. Soon after its release, he told us in his will, Victory, when it will come, will be a victory through Maria. Start praying one rosary every day for the success of Mary TV's project, constructing a television facility next to St. James Church in order to bring Our Lady's daily presence in Medjugorje to the world through modern means of communications technologies. As he lay dying at the end of his life, Cardinal Jaime Sin, Pope John Paul's good friend, was offering his prayers and sacrifices for the success of this project. The Honorable Alfred Kingan, former U.S. Ambassador to the European Community, and secretary to President Reagan's cabinet, who was getting Our Lady's messages from Medjugorje to both President Reagan and President Gorbachev before the fall of the Berlin Wall, also encourages support for Mary TV's project. Mary TV is a not-for-profit lay apostolate in the church, entirely dependent on private donations. Only with your help will we be able to finish construction and begin. Make checks payable to Mary TV and send to Mary TV, P.O. Box 899, Notre Dame, Indiana 46556, USA. Just before he died, the Pope of the Secret of Fatima told visiting bishops from the U.S., Now is above all the hour of the lay faithful. Father Calloway was asked to preside at the English Mass in St. James in Medjugorje and give the homily. Listen to the Gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. A certain Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, but she is a sinner. Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, 
I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owed 500 days wages and the other owed 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, the one, I suppose, whose larger debt was forgiven. He said to him, you have judged rightly. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the day, since the time I entered. <coughs> you did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. Hence she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven, loves little. He said to her, your sins are forgiven. The others at table said to themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. There are no accidents in life. Everything happens because of a reason, because of God our Father's plan. My friends, each and every one of you is here in this church today, St. James Church in Medjugorje, because God your Father has brought you here. Mary your mother has brought you here. And because there are no accidents, this gospel is meant to be heard by each and every one of you. God has a plan for you during your time here. You come from different places from all around the world. Everywhere you could possibly imagine. You've been brought here together on this day to hear this gospel proclaimed to you. As you know, this is a holy place. Our Lady has been appearing here for over 20 years. Miracles have happened here, too numerous to count. Physical, spiritual healings, conversions of every kind. This is a moment for you, for me. It's my first time here. God loves us so much, so very, very much. The Gospel today is about conversion. And the Lord Jesus gives us an example of how to respond to his offer of forgiveness. And it gives us an example of how we should do it and how we should not do it. We know that there's a Pharisee and a sinful woman. The Lord Jesus is invited to this Pharisee's house. And by external appearances, it might appear that the Pharisee wants to know Jesus. But you know he really doesn't. At no time does this Pharisee humble himself at the visitation of Jesus. He's critical. He's skeptical. Who is this? Doesn't he realize if he were a prophet, he would know that that's a sinful woman. At no time does he humble himself before Jesus. He doesn't even perform the customary rite in the, those days, in the Jewish household, when someone comes into your house, you wash their feet. The roads are dusty. And it's a sign of humility to do that. He doesn't do it. Jesus says that he doesn't do it. Why? Because he's not a humble man. He thinks he's got it all together. He thinks he's perfect. He doesn't want to publicly display before his fellow Jews that he's not everything. That the world doesn't revolve around him. 
And he looks at Jesus critically. I doubt you say who you are. Look at you. Don't you know who that is at your feet? But my friends, that's why he doesn't experience a conversion. He doesn't humble himself. He thinks he's, all, he's got it all together. Perfect. No. What's the next example that we're given? This woman who is called a great sinner. And what do we make of that? I make of it that she was probably either a prostitute or an adulteress. One of the two, perhaps both, who knows. But she is so humble that she brings everything that she has, an alabaster jar, oil, and ointment. And she doesn't even go to the front of Jesus to look him in the face. But to wipe his feet, she has to get on her knees. And she goes down on her knees behind him. She knows she's not worthy. This is God. This is the Messiah, the God-man. And she bathes his feet with tears of repentance. She is crying her heart out. And Jesus doesn't stop her. This is a lesson to this Pharisee and to all in the household of repentance of what it's all about, of coming to know Jesus. This is the way to humble yourself, to acknowledge all your baggage, all your stuff. This woman probably knew that if she even entered this Pharisee's home, she might be stoned. Doesn't matter. This is the opportunity for conversion. Before her is the God-man. I need forgiveness. My friends, you're here in Medjugorje. God, through Our Lady, through our mother's most tender and sweet heart, has brought you here. This is a holy place. Don't be a skeptic. Don't doubt. Come to the feet of Jesus and unburden yourself with all the things that you have been weighing you down in your life. You may not be an adulteress, an adulterer, or a prostitute, or anything like that, but maybe you have been. You never know. I've been amazed when I preached before. Afterwards, people have told me, I can't believe you said that. And it was true. God has you here for a reason. To experience the mercy, the forgiveness of Jesus. To humble yourself. To empty yourself. You've come here with concerns on your own heart. Some of you have come here as mothers whose children are away from the church whose spouses are away from the faith. You yourself might be struggling with addictions, sexual sins. Come to Jesus. This is the place to do it. He's brought you here for conversion. Is that not what Our Lady is saying? This is a great place where mercy is poured out, the divine mercy, blood and water flow. When we repent, when we allow ourselves to be converted, to wash the feet of Jesus with our tears of repentance, and he will turn those tears into tears of joy. I know a young man, 11 years ago, who was not a Catholic, who was not even really a Christian, baptized in Episcopalian when he was 10, but his family never lived the faith. This young man did everything you could possibly imagine between the ages of 12 and 21. You name it, he did it. He used every kind of drug you could possibly imagine. Opium, crack, heroin, cocaine, marijuana, LSD, mushrooms, alcohol was a given, everything. Dropped out of high school, was literally kicked out of another country, went to jail three times twice in another country, once in this country, was homeless, living in a tree trunk on macaroni and cheese and marijuana, tattoos, long hair down to his waist, foul-mouthed, dead in sin, because he never humbled himself to the truth that sets free the hearts of men. And then one day in 1992, this young man read a book called The Queen of Peace Visits Medjugorje. And it rocked his world. It changed everything in this young man's life. Everything. Within eight months, he became a Catholic. Within a year, he joined a religious community. And he's never even been to Medjugorje. But he's here now. 
and he's a Roman Catholic priest. And he's here before you today celebrating Mass for you. God has his ways. When we humble ourselves, God comes down and says, I want you to know me and to love me passionately. And all those things that you pursued in your life before with zeal and ardor and fervor, turn to me and love me. I'd like to think that this woman was Mary Magdalene. Who knows? We don't, we're not given her name. But we know what she went through. What graces she received. What conversion she went through. My friends, these days are days of grace for you. I don't know how long you're here. Maybe you're leaving this afternoon. Maybe you just arrived yesterday. Don't let the graces pass you by. Maybe you've never confessed some things. Unburden yourself. Maybe you've had an abortion. Go to Jesus. Go to confession. Maybe you've got shameful things on your soul. Shameful things you've never confessed. Go to Jesus. Jesus is the divine mercy. There is nothing that falls outside of the shadow of the cross. Nothing. Go to Him. Lay it all out. Lay your alabaster jar before Jesus. Lord, I don't care what people think. I don't care if I walk around crying but the whole time I'm here. I want to have a conversion. I want to know you. I want to love you with everything. Let the tears flow if they come, if you're given that gift. Maybe you drink too much. Maybe you use contraception in your marriage. Go to Jesus. Get it all out. Don't let the grace pass you by. Who knows? This could be the time of your visitation. Don't respond like the Pharisee. You're broke. We're all broke. And yes, I'm a priest, but I still need so much conversion in my life. So much. That's why I'm here. A pilgrimage of thanksgiving, but a pilgrimage of reconversion. Recommitting myself to the Lord Jesus Christ and to Our Lady, our most sweet and tender mother. Don't miss the grace. God loves you. Tell Him everything. And you will walk away from this place free, dancing like a little child. To be a child of God again. To be free. To go home. And let the journey, the adventure of becoming a saint of God begin. God love you all. message that Our Lady gave us from Medjugorje after we filmed Father Calloway's testimony. She called to us, Dear children, I call you anew to consecrate yourselves to my heart and to the heart of my son, Jesus. I desire, dear children, to lead you all on the way of conversion and holiness. Only in this way, through you, we can lead all the more souls on the way of salvation. Do not delay, little children. But say with all your heart, I want to help Jesus and Mary, that all the more brothers and sisters may come to know the way of holiness. In this way, you will feel the contentment of being friends of Jesus. Thank you for having responded to my call. One way you can help Our Lady is by spreading this DVD, available from Mary TV, P. 
P.O. Box 899, Notre Dame, Indiana, 46556. It can also be streamed or downloaded to iPod at no cost on Mary TV's website, www.marytv.tv. Father Calloway and I first met in Frankfurt after having flown across the ocean together on the night of September 11th on our way to Medjugorje, a date that has become a sign of infamy to the world. By responding to Mary TV's appeal, you'll be helping bring another sign to the world's attention. Our Lady has said in her messages, Medjugorje is a sign to all of you and a call to pray and live the days of grace that God is giving you. Hi, I'm Dennis Nolan. The focus of my life since my first pilgrimage to Medjugorje in 1986 has been to spread the messages of Our Lady, try to live them, and uh, to spread the incredible news that the Blessed Mother is coming every day to the world for us. As we were boarding the plane for Dubrovnik, I asked Father Calloway if he had watched the video we had just been shown on the plane as we were flying into Frankfurt. Well, he, he had been sleeping, and I think he wondered why this was so important for me that I wanted to share it with him. Well, I'm going to tell you. It was a film about Formula One, something I knew nothing about, featuring a guy named Frank Williams. For years, Frank Williams had been funding his own British race car by selling used car parts. One day, he had the idea of placing his car on a busy street in London in such a way that the police couldn't have it towed right in front of the apartment of the son of an Arab oil sheik. The boy saw it, fell in love with it. From then on, he no longer had to sell used car parts to fund his car. The Arab oil baron backed him with millions. Today, according to the film, Frank Williams has a yearly budget of $350 million and a crew of 400 engineers who are so dedicated, the narrator told us, they have no social life. They work around the clock to improve that car's speed. What dedication to make a car go faster. After every race, they put it on a platform connected to a computer, which the narrator said cost a million dollars, to simulate even the tiniest movement of the car that it went through during that race, to see how its speed could be improved. I remember once taking my kids to watch an Indiana Jones movie. Just before it started, there was a two-minute ad, an extravaganza with Michael Jackson, advertising a soft drink. I sat there in a state of shock. Talk about the sons of the world being wiser in their dealings than the sons of the kingdom. We're doing a better job of selling Pepsi Cola than we are at presenting to the world the Blessed Mother coming every day with a sure peace plan from heaven for every family every individual for the whole world to be saved. We have a moral obligation, a moral mandate to get this good news spread. I remember during a meeting on June 30th, 1999 with the Minister of Telecommunications in Sarajevo to see if the government would actually grant a license for a TV station in Medjugorje. At one point, the Muslim minister interrupted me. He said, you don't have to try to convince me that this is important. President is that Bigovic was in prison with Father Yozo. We know it's important for peace that these messages get spread. We had a lot of time talking, and one of the things we talked about was satellites. Well, now, 10 years later, you don't need satellites anymore to reach the world with full-blown quality television. Modern communications technologies are changing every three months getting better, easier to use, and for the most part, less expensive. When I was in Medjugorje for this last anniversary, I found myself one morning having coffee with a guy from Germany, Herbert Lieber, who's devoted his family fortune to spreading Our Lady's messages in his country. At one point, he turned to me, I remember looking over his cup of coffee, and he said, there are 33 million people in Germany. Less than 1% know about Medjugorje. When the secrets start being revealed, they're gonna turn to us and say, why didn't you tell us? And speaking of the secrets, we've known that the third secret marked the end of Our Lady's da daily apparitions, the permanent miracle, the sign on Mount Padbido. Well, speaking last year on Radio Maria in Italy, Vitska shared that Our Lady had told her recently 
that when the permanent miracle comes and the secrets start being revealed to the world, Our Lady is going to continue to appear to one of the visionaries during that time. That's going to be very difficult for the people on the earth in order to be a comfort to her children. Well, Mary TV would be there on the ground helping bring the comfort of her daily presence with us to millions. Mary TV's project will make it possible for the visionaries to speak on a big screen, live from Medjugorje to every conference in the world. Every one of those Medjugorje shrines that we just saw on this DVD would be able to be hooked up live with Medjugorje. Our Lady told us more than 20 years ago from Medjugorje, the source of grace is here, but you, dear children, are the vehicles transmitting the gifts. I'm calling you to give the gift to others with love and not to keep it for yourselves. Go back and watch this DVD over again and listen to what John Paul the Great, the Pope of the Secret of Fatima, said. We can't let his words go in one ear and out the other. Eighteen years ago, the Blessed Mother warned in a message from Medjugorje, Now as never before, Satan wants to show the world his shameful face by which he wants to seduce as many people as possible onto the way of death and sin. Therefore, dear children, help my Immaculate Heart to triumph in this sinful world. I beseech all of you to offer prayers and sacrifices for my intentions. Well, Mary TV's television station in Medjugorje could be one of her intentions. Ten years ago, during an apparition in Medjugorje, Our Lady told Vizca that our plan to build a TV station in Medjugorje was good. We should be patient, getting ready slowly, little by little. She herself would tell us when to begin. Well, that time may be close. Vizca told me recently she's praying every day for Mary TV's plan to be realized. Maria and Ivan have told me they're praying too. Can there be any doubt the world today is witnessing Satan's shameful face? We've got to get Our Lady's beautiful face and her presence with us in Medjugorje out to the world. More than 20 years ago, she told us in her messages, God has chosen each one of you in order to use you in his great plan for the salvation of mankind. Six months later, I beg you, help me. Three years after that, I'm calling you to be my apostles. Four years later, I need you. I'm calling you. I need your help. And then two years after that, do you not recognize the signs of the times? A year later, you're all important in this great plan which God leads through Medjugorje. God desires to convert the entire world and call it to salvation. And then on August 25, 2009, I am with you and am leading you. Believe me, Satan's terrified. He knows what's in the Bible. He knows what's coming, what her heel is going to do to his head. We just heard in this DVD that as he lay dying, Cardinal Jaime Sin was offering his prayers and sacrifices for the success of Mary TV's project, building a TV station in Medjugorje. In fact, I received his letter in the mail the day after he died. Knowing that the rumors were true, he had in fact been sent to Medjugorje by Pope John Paul II when he was prefect uh, for the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith. I sent this DVD that you've just watched to Pope Benedict XVI, also thanking him for his introduction to Cardinal Bertoni's book, The Last Secret of Fatima, pointing out that it had contained a chapter on Medjugorje. I received this letter back expressing his thanks. After watching this DV, a cardinal close to the Holy Father wrote to me that he's praying to John Paul II that through his intercession we get the money to finish construction. And when the building's completed, the Cardinal Primate of America has said he's going to Medjugorje to consecrate it to Our Lady. Actually, he said this on three separate occasions. He really intends to do it. Note the recent picture from Medjugorje's parish webpage of Mary TV's building overlooking the 2009 Youth Festival. You can see it just there beyond the parish's outside altar. The visionaries were forbidden to speak on church property. They could have addressed the festival from our building, and not only the Youth Festival, but the whole world. 65,000 young people from all over the world for eight days of prayer, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, praying the rosary in so many different languages. 600 priests can celebrating their mass and not one mention in the Catholic media or any media. They get 20,000 kids for one day in Indianapolis and it makes headlines in every Catholic newspaper in America. I think if we can get the bushel basket off this incredible light, we may see the greatest responses to Our Lady's call come from where we might least expect.
Don't overlook in what we just saw in this DVD that it was the non-Christian executive director of the Congressional Human Rights Caucus who wrote the Muslim president of Bosnia urging him to visit Medjugorje. She wrote in there, I urge you to visit Medjugorje to find a solution to your problems for your country. There are times in the life of a nation as much as in the life of individuals, she wrote, when only divine providence can point to a new and unexpected solution to the problems. Now this came from being introduced to Medjugorje for the first time by just seeing something on TV. A Franciscan in Medjugorje told me two years ago, it's clear the Holy Spirit is opening doors before you. Well, that's true. The hand of providence is at work. Our Lady is bringing the most amazing team together. For example, Tom Tasso, an NBC technology expert, has for nearly 40 years been looked to by the church for his technical expertise. He runs a media apostolate right now that has nine cardinals on its board. Well, he's Mary TV's director of engineering. Tom did the first filming in Medjugorje with a professional crew in January of 1983. We've used some of that footage in this DVD. Here's Tom manning our truck, filming a Medjugorje event in the States. Right now, he's trying to figure out a way to get that truck over to Medjugorje. And here's Charlie Light, our computer specialist, manning the controls. Tom Atasso, along with a priest, Father Philip Beret, built radio and TV stations throughout the former East Bloc countries after the fall of the Berlin Wall at the direction of the American bishops. Tom addressed the 2009 New Evangelization of America conference on a TV station in every diocese. There were more cardinals and bishops in attendance than laity. I count it. Another sign to the hand of Providence, when Tom was in Medjugorje several years ago overseeing construction of our building, the builder happened to mention to him that when he had been constructing the outside altar and laying the pews and bricks around the outside of the church, one day it dawned on him that someday there might be a need for television in the church. And so in his own volition, he decided to lay conduit lines under the bricks for TV cables. You'll never guess where the junction box just happens to be in order to access those lines right next to our building. That's all in Our Lady's hands, the future, what happens. But there are some things in our hands right now. The builder tells me construction could be finished in six months if we had the money to finish. We need to be ready for when Our Lady says to begin. Don't underestimate the power of your monthly donation, no matter how small. I'm convinced this gift will be given Our Lady only by the littlest of her children, the most insignificant from the world's perspective. Just a couple of blocks from my house, a new law building has gone up at Notre Dame, $54 million from one donor. That's not how this project is going to get funded, even though we don't even need 2% of that. The enemy's Achilles heel is your widow's might. Start sending your monthly donation of $5, or $10, or $25, 50 or $100 to Mary TV. You can contribute through PayPal also on the internet, marytv.tv. In discussing this project, Mary TV's project, building a TV station in Medjugorje with my bishop recently, we both agreed that people today aren't really as bad as they often think they are. Many feel that they're full of junk, but that's because that's what's, being, that's what's been coming into them. That's what's being fed through the media. They're being fed through the media and the Internet. Our Lady's beauty is so great, so powerful, she could convert the whole world overnight, as happened to young 20-year-old Don Calloway, just by seeing pictures in a book. Satan is terrified of the beauty of Our Lady, the power of her presence with us. Don't forget, 12 years ago, she told us in a message from Medjugorje, this time is my time. It's not the enemy's time. That's what he wants us to think. Satan's only hope is for Our Lady's children to get discouraged. Now's the time to take the offense. My bishop's last words of direction to me regarding Mary TV building a TV station in Medjugorje were, Dennis, just tell the truth. Well, that's what we're going to do. No politics, nobody's miserable interest, no agenda. Mary TV is a lay apostolate founded to put at Our Lady's disposal the gospel service, 
modern communications technologies to bring her presence in Medjugorje and her school in Medjugorje to the world. Start sending in your monthly tax-exempt donation today. Thank you and God bless you. Slava Otcu i Sinu i Duhu Sveto, kako bi jaše na početku.